Episode 1. Hello World. Processing is an open source computing program. It's specifically built for the electronic arts, new media and visual design communities, but has a large fundamental in teaching computer programming through a visual context. We're going to look at how to lay out and format the most basic of processing sketch, the basics of writing code. Before we get into detail about how processing itself is going to function, there's some things about how a program works that we need to understand. First and foremost, with the work we are going to be doing, imagine the concept as if you're reading a modern puzzle book, in the form that everything happens like you would read a normal page, from top left to bottom right, no matter what it says, you read each line as you go along. Programs run in the same way. A computer will start at the top and run each line sequentially until it reaches the bottom or until it's told to do something differently. So in the midst of all your work you may have a line that says jump to section 34 and all the way down somewhere else in the code after lines and lines of text section 34 exists that inside that has separate pieces of code until you reach a defined end of section 34 where it then returns to the previous line and continues all code from there. This is the basic concept of a program and how a computer runs and reads what we write as, we go, as it goes along. This will make more sense as we continue and actually start writing programs but it's important to note, and just a general idea to sort of begin understanding just now. How do we actually write a program? So we know that it's going to read each line as it goes along. So it's important that we understand that workflow and have everything in the correct order. For example, we'll learn about variables in the next episode, but if we try and add two numbers together, Before we've told it what number 1 and what number 2 are, then it will not be able to do that calculation. So it's important for us to tell the computer what each number equals before we ask it to do any maths or calculations with them. This is the basic concept of declaration. E.g. we specifically tell the computer that something is equal to something and later on we can use it in calculations if we need it. This isn't something we'll explicitly cover, but it is something that we may discuss or talk about in future episodes. On top of the layout of a standard program, it's important to understand how formatting is important. For example, when we write the name of something, for example number one, number one, these are very different things from number one, and number one respectively. A computer doesn't understand like we do, knowing that number one, number one, and number one could all mean the same thing. Explicitly to a computer, these all mean different things. Characters such as spaces, underscores, dashes, numerical values, as well as capital letters are all very specific to note and monitor while going through your code. Finally, when a computer is reading our code, we need a way to denote that it has reached the end of that command. We do this in most modern programming languages using a semicolon. For example, a standard line in processing may be int number one is equal to a hundred thousand semicolon. Regardless of what this line actually means, it has a command for the computer which it will execute. The semicolon then denotes that it has finished that command and able to move on to the next one. Lines that do not have a semicolon where they should be required will clearly be errored inside the processing development environment. And this is one of the main reasons that we use it. It's error checking and problem solving make it very good for beginners and experts alike. Blocks of code are contained within what are called functions. These are what allow us to skip in the fashion that we've detailed before, for example, jump to section 34. Section 34 being the function in this case. 
the use of function allow us to break the normal sequential order of a program's execution and allow us to do different things and check different variables on the fly. This is where programming comes into its own and changes it from just being a list of instructions for a computer to follow out, such as a macro that you could make in Microsoft Word or Microsoft Excel. We discussed these in the very initial introduction, but processing requires two functions before it can start. This being the setup and the draw functions. Setup is a single loop, always operated first function. No matter what has happened in the program, setup will be called at the very start before any other code is executed. This, as it's titled, allows us to set up initial parameters, structure the program for us, and give the computer a general idea of what it's about to do. Draw is the meat and bones, and the majority of our code for the first three exercises will go purely in here. Draw loops over and over and over again until the computer either A crashes or terminates, e.g. we tell it to stop. And this is an important thing to note later on, as when we move outside of using draw and more into our own functions and classes, we'll begin to explore how we can truly control the flow of a program. While this overview might seem basic, that is the general understanding we need to be able to write code in processing and programs in general. As we move on, we'll begin developing our own reference file so that we can document all the work that we're learning, and then we'll begin making our own program in the form of a game that we can develop throughout this exercise. The reference. I'm a strong believer in the tell, show, have a go theory in the form of seeing what's to be done, hearing what's to be done, and then doing it yourself. In this initial episode, we're gonna develop what's called a hollow world test in programming. We're going to write a very basic program and get it to display the text Hello World back to us. This will use all of the learning that we introduced about the formatting and writing of generic code and give us a, the bare bones of a reference file that we can continue to add on to and develop as this course continues. As we already discussed, processing requires two main functions. That is the setup and draw functions. When a function is declared, the word void at the start of it simply means that the computer is not going to expect a return from it. Some of the more complex functions we use later on may include returned variables such as an integer, a number, or a string, some text that we use later on or in some way through the program. For now though, we'll normally use void and this is required. Draw or setup are simply the names of the functions the bold blue here denotes functions that are pre-built into processing, whereas we could define our own that, while still valid, would not showcase the deep blue text shown here. The brackets would handle the input of variables. As set up and draw, do not require these, but they are something that we'll use when we create our own later. For now, we can ignore these. The curly brace denote the start and the end of each function. This is how the computer knows A, where the function starts and which code to access, and B, where the function ends, so where to stop reading that function and return to its previous spot. This is how it tracks the bouncing around of its program reader, and it knows sequentially where it's looking from there. Setup at the moment exists on line two and three, and draw exists on line eight, nine, and 10. The way the processing works is that lines 2 and 3 would be read before 8, 9 and 10. However, as setup is always read first by processing, lines 11 and 12 would now be read before 4, 5 and 6. While this may be a confusing concept to hold on to, based on the sequential way that programming works, this is something that we'll come across again later. In the initial introduction, we spoke about two other sections in a processing program, the first being the initialization and the fourth being the optional functions. To showcase these, I'm going to teach you a handy method called commenting. Two forward slashes and then whatever text you want, signified by the grayed out color, means a comment. 
This is completely ignored by the program's compiler, and while running a program will not do anything at all in the way of action. It's really useful for making notes, comments, or explaining what your work does. We'll use these at the start and before any complex functions to just explain to viewers and readers what we're actually doing and should you revisit a program in the, in the future, it'll help you understand what we did. There are two types of comment. The ones you see here with a double slash, which is a single line, and a slash, asterisk, asterisk, asterisk slash denotes a multi-line comment. Each of these have different uses, but they do the exact same thing. I'll let you decide as and when to use which, as multiple single line comments is more than appropriate and will still work. I would encourage you to get into the habit of using comments as and when you write a line of code or program, just to remind yourself in your own words what it is you're actually doing or what a section of code actually does. As we're making a reference file, I'm going to leave these here at the very top just to remind me how to create comments and what sort of effect they have. Please note, if you open a multi-line comment and do not close it with the asterisk slash, none of your program will exist and it will not run after that point. The very first section of a program is called initialization. This is where the program defines all of its initial variables and allocates memory for them so it knows how to operate in the future. We'll cover, cover variables in chapter two. For now, we're gonna leave initialization blank, but give it some room so we can add comments later. Setup. The very first section of code always actioned before anything else in processing. Other programming languages may work slightly different and keep the sequential top to bottom order. However, in processing, setup is always the first piece of code ran. Draw, also known as loop, is the meat of the program. This is where the, the action actually happens. To demonstrate the difference between setup and draw and how processing works, I'm gonna teach you one final basic programming and processing technique. This is called the print command. And this is a natural line of code. Print allows us to error check and look at what we're doing without the requirement of having to draw any solutions. One of the big things about processing is its ability to draw and run on a canvas. However, we don't need that to check values or numbers as we go. So for now, we'll do it all within the development environment outlined by this black space at below titled console. To give you an example, print is signified as a command by the presence of a semicolon, a command, brackets, and then whatever we want it to print. Running the, the processing sketch will display a single hello in the console below. This is due to the fact that we know that setup runs once at the very start of the program. So we can use print to guess or analyze what we think will happen. So what do you think will happen knowing that setup runs once and draw runs forever until termination will happen if we move our print command into the draw loop? Pushing run, you will see that hello is printed into the console on loop without break to infinity. Now, if this was a more complex 
calculation, such as some recurring mass, this would go until the computer crashes and memory runs out. But due to the simple nature of this, this will run for infinity, so I'm going to terminate it manually, doing so with the stop button above. So print within the void draw will continually print hello onto console. We can use this knowledge to test any sums, any iterations, uh, checking whether a, a calculation is valid or not, without ever having to build a final pr program. You will use this on a daily basis while programming in any language. I'm going to save this processing sketch. In a file called reference as we will keep coming back to this every episode until we finished we will add to it in the same fashion we have done here with our comments our outline of the initialization and then the explanation of what happens inside the setup and draw loops we will also come back and explain what optional functions are later in our development for today what we're going to do is simply use the learning from the reference tutorial to develop our basic outline. Try and do it without following along with the video, but just know, leave space for initialization. Make sure to include your setup, your draw, and space at the bottom for functions. Include comments explaining what each part's doing, but make sure that you have setup and draw included. I'm going to add them now. So I'm going to add void setup because we know that setup doesn't pass any values back to the program, but we need to tell it that nothing's coming back. And finally, I'm going to do void draw. Just make sure that we've got our curly brackets closing it. I'm going to add a comment at the end of each called end whatever the function's called. Now I'm going to add a new comment with lots of dashed lines. And this just makes it easier for me to visually see where the start and end of each function is. Some people prefer to do this, some people prefer not to. It really just depends on personal preference whether you like the, the way that it looks. Some people denote the end, start and end of each function with a line so that they can quickly scan where code is starting and where code is ending, similar to the way that the curly brackets work for the computer. I'm going to save this. I'm going to call it main program. As similar to the reference, we will be using this every episode from now on. And to quickly check it's working, I'm going to add a print command. Testing. going to put that in setup I can see testing in my console and then I'm just going to quickly move it to draw seeing the repeated testing I know that my program layout is correct I'm going to save and end episode one there